and then bam, right away it trips. Uh, pop, or pop. It's bam. Really clean bath. So you definitely hear that. Now we don't know where that is. We just know, okay, our short is to ground. Thanks for watching this video. It is about a compressor that is tripping a breaker, blowing a fuse. And often when you have a compressor that's tripping a breaker, blowing a fuse, you don't first know whether it's the compressor or something else in the condensing unit. We're talking about a typical kind of split system here, which is the most common type of air conditioner that you're going to see. So you have a breaker that's tripping for the condensing unit and you got to figure out what's causing it. And the easiest way to start doing that is to do a visual inspection, look for possible, you know, rubbing out wires or, or things that, you know, don't look right, shorted, grounded, things like that. But when you have a breaker or fuse that's blowing slash tripping, what that means is, is that you're drawing too much current. And generally, it's going to be significantly too much current because if it's just a slight over amperage or overload condition, then generally the motor is going to shut itself off via internal overload. So when we say an overload condition, generally motors within air conditioners are going to shut themselves off or they're going to have a starter or something else that has overload protection in it. When a fuse is blowing or a breaker is tripping, that's usually a more extreme extreme version, and we call that a short or a grounded condition. And so often when we're talking about a compressor winding, which is the wiring inside the compressor motor that's touching ground, it's touching the casing or something else inside that compressor, we'll call that a grounded condition or a shorted to ground condition. That's a really common cause, a compressor tripping a breaker. You can also have a situation where you have a leg to leg short where the windings themselves are shorted together. That's really, really tricky. So warning, it's really tricky to measure that ohm reading from one winding to winding because you have to have a really good ohm meter and you have to have the data that says what that ohm reading should be in the first place. And it's very low generally on compressors. Again, this video here is focused on compressors as Bert's going to show you a real life example here. But keep in mind, you got to have a really accurate ohm meter and you have to have the manufacturer specifications that shows you what that ohm measurement should be. If you take a look at this screenshot, this is the Copeland mobile app. And so using the Copeland mobile app, you can find the resistances. If you've got a Copeland compressor, that data may be a little trickier if your compressor is not a Copeland compressor. But again, keep in mind that it's extremely rare for compressors to be shorted leg to leg without being shorted to ground. When I say extremely rare, I know I'm going to get the emails of people saying it happens to them all the time. I'm just saying in my experience, generally speaking, compressors are shorted to ground. So Bert's going to show you a traditional situation of how to diagnose a compressor and whether or not it's shorted to ground. Hope you enjoy. Hey, so uh, I got a compressor here that's shorted. I'm going to do a quick video on some do's and don'ts when it comes to diagnosing a shorted compressor and then I'll just uh, walk you through what I do. I show up, our breaker's tripped, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the breaker and then bam, right away it trips. So I know I got a really significant short. It's not like uh, pop or pop. It's bam, right when I turn on that breaker it trip, okay? So that's our condenser breaker. So I'm gonna come outside, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just check if this is a short to ground. Try to confirm that with my meter. I'm gonna set it on ohms, and then I'll put one leg on ground. This ground is the most common, you know, short you run into. One leg on ground, power's off inside, the breaker's off, and I'm gonna check to see if we have a short on our high voltage. So, uh, I mean, we're showing a kind of a path. I mean, that's 113. That's still lots of resistance there. Um, not a clean path. We'll check the other side. And that, that's pretty much a perfect path. So we got zero. It's showing zero resistance from my high voltage on th this side, path to ground. Let me change the function here. That way you can hear when you're checking for continuity here. So if it's not a really clean path, you're not going to hear that. You hear that? Mm -hmm. All right, so check this out. So on this side, we, did, we didn't have a really clean path. And then over here, really clean path. So you definitely hear that. We have a short to ground. Now, we don't know where that is. We just know, okay, our short is to ground. Great, so now look, what do we do next? We're gonna do a visual check. So let's go over the unit. We're just gonna check wiring real briefly because you know it's common to have a wire rub out and that visual check is very important. I've done that already here. Next thing I, I move to is the compressor. That's probably the number one reason I have a breaker that, that trips immediately like that at the condenser is a, a shorted compressor. So we're gonna test that. It's crucial. 
when you're checking your compressor that you remove your wire leads, okay? So, and on this, you know, pay attention to where you're doing this. Not, not a lot of these old compressors are labeled. Like you can see here, we don't have a label for start, common, and run. Um, so save yourself the trouble. So now we've disconnected the wiring from our compressor. We can check the compressor directly to ground from the terminals themselves. So if there's a short somewhere in the wiring and that's what's causing it, then we're gonna pick that up now. You can come over here and see if this has changed. Okay, so now to ground, we don't, we're not getting a path. So we've just isolated that removing that those plugs from the compressor made the difference there. In this situation, we have a really clean path to ground. The short is pretty obvious. So, you know, I'm picking it up with my meter. I haven't even pulled out the mega, a mega meter, which is sometimes needed when you have insulation breaking down on your windings and periodic shorts or breaker may be tripping right away under load, but you don't pick it up as easily with just your hands, you know, regular handheld meter. So I'll show you that next. Let's check on our leads. You can hear that. I'm getting an immediate connection to ground. Our common winding is what is shorted to ground internal to the compressor. So now we've isolated to the compressor with our meter. I wanted to also show you using the mega meter because sometimes you're short, you, you can't pick it up as clear with your handheld meter. So a mega meter will actually dramatically increase the voltage and it can be very helpful or necessary sometimes for confirming that pressure diagnostic. So I'm using the, the B-side insulation tester. You leave the wires hooked up and it's actually a short somewhere in the wires. So always disconnect the wires, isolate, your compressor. I'd already done this, so I hadn't yet mentioned it in the video, but um, making a really clean connection where your meter clamps on or touches is important to actually accurately read resistance. So what the mega meter does is it increases the voltage between your two meter leads. It can travel through a higher amount of resistance to voltage than what your handheld meter might be able to produce. Uh, to travel through and 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 so then you can see where there's a short. I'm gonna put it on 500 volts That's pretty typical for a mega meter and I have a range option that you know decimal point Go ahead and leave the decimal point in there. So for a second I thought I needed two hands, you know push it in to test but I can actually push down turn it to lock it And I don't need that extra hand to pull this camera and then let's check First, I'm gonna check on the terminal that my handheld meter did not actually pick up the short. Following that, haven't much on run last time. Yeah, so you can see that's a perfect path. So, you know, at 500 volts DC voltage, we're getting perfect path from our compressor windings to ground. Makes sense. So we've confirmed with our meter that the compressor shorted to ground. A couple common mistakes. One is that you don't actually unplug the compressor terminals. Number two, which is probably more common, is that technicians pulling out their mega meter and they're checking leg to leg between common and run, common and start, or start and run on the compressor. Their mega meter, of course, is going to read that you have a clear path uh, across the windings and usually it'll show you bad, you know, it'll, if you have the old, the Seco style mega meter, it'll just say bad on the compressor. So. That's a mistake you do not want to make. So you never want to actually test leg to leg across your terminals for a shorted compressor. That, that tells you nothing. And then I would say one more thing. If you have a scroll compressor, you will sometimes actually have an electrical connection between the windings and the casing that you can pick up with a megometer. And if you're using like the Seco, it might tell you this scroll is bad at 20 ohms of resistance which I believe that Copeland will tell you that a short to ground a short to ground compressor is going to read below 0.5 uh, as far as resistance goes on a scroll compressor. So I had a situation where it would trip the breaker, bam, 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 like that, and I isolate the compressor, I hook up the seco meter, push the button and it shows bad. You know, somewhere around 20 ohms, it just shows bad. So I was ready to condemn that compressor 
until I noticed the capacitor was swollen and it had burst outside the capacitor. And so I was like, huh, let me just see what happens. Hook up the capacitor with a new capacitor, plug it in the compressor, turn on the breaker, everything runs fine. Don't test leg to leg to confirm a shorted compressor. That tells you pretty much nothing. Check your wiring, do a visual check, check your start components, you know, confirm. And then the last step, which we often call the regneck test, is crucial. You disregard your tools, your meter, and you just confirm through isolation that what's causing the breaker to trip actually is the compressor. And I often use this to show the customer because this is sometimes the clearest example to give them. With the compressor plugged in, the breaker trips immediately. We remove that, I put some uh, electrical tape on there so nothing gets shorted out. We'll go ahead and put the fan back on. We're gonna hook the fan up, all in its proper places. Then we're going to go inside and hit that breaker and the breaker should stay on. Nothing should be causing that to trip. Come out here, the contactor's pulled in, the fan's running, there's no other problems. We've isolated that it's actually the compressor shorted and not a wiring harness somewhere, not the condenser fan motor, which will happen, but rarely it'll short the ground internally and proven, you know, that to the customer and to ourselves that our tools are working, it is actually the compressor is shorted. So um, don't forget that last step. And that's that's pretty much it, I think. Hopefully this is helpful for you. So I wanna pause right here and just talk to you about this chart that I got from Copeland. And this really simplifies this does not start instantly blows fuses or trips breakers. So anytime it says blows fuses, that's also applies to trips breakers. So first question is, is the compressor grounded? Well, figuring out if the compressor is grounded is fairly easy. You're generally going to use just a typical ohm meter and go from each terminal on the compressor to ground. Now, keep in mind, single phase compressors, typical single phase compressors have a run winding and a start winding. Common is a terminal. It's a point between run and start. It's not its own winding. So even in this video, Bert, and initially when he said, the common terminal, he said the common winding, which is a common mistake for us to make. Common mistake because it's common. Uh, but you're going to measure from each one of those to ground to see which one is potentially grounded with the wires off of the terminals. Because again, if you leave the wires on the terminals, you leave the spades on the terminals, then potentially it could be the wire that's grounded and not the compressor itself. So I always pull the terminals off, take a picture or mark the wires so I know how they go back on. Then I measure from each terminal to ground. Bert also shows that if you're going to use a megometer for this purpose, uh, generally not necessary, but if you're going to do it, then you have to take into account that you're also measuring from terminal to ground. You don't use a mega ohm meter from terminal to terminal. And also keep in mind that with scroll compressors, often that ohm measurement to ground is going to be significantly less than that. Keep that in mind when looking for this grounding or shorted compressor. With a scroll compressor, the motor is down, meaning it's immersed in the oil and refrigerant, and it can often measure a lower uh, ohm reading than you would see on a typical more open motor type of configuration. So you'll often see lower than that 20 mega ohms to ground on a scroll compressor. Once you've checked whether or not the compressor is grounded, if the answer is yes, then you have to replace the compressor. If the answer is no, then you check your winding resistance uh, against the manufacturer data. If it's Copeland, then you use the Copeland mobile app. If it's some other compressor, then you would have to refer to the manufacturer data. Keep in mind that many ohm meters are not accurate enough to do this test well. So you really have to know something about your meter and whether it has that level of accuracy. All right, so that's it. That is checking a shorted slash grounded compressors, blowing, tripping a breaker. Again, we're going to talk more in future videos about locked compressors, uh, compressors that have internal compression issues. This specifically is about ones that are tripping a breaker, blowing a fuse. And this is specifically what you're going to see. Those of you who talk, who want to kind of throw out there that locked compressor sees compressor sh tripping the breaker, that is almost always going to result in an internal overload, not in a tripped breaker or blown fuse. Hopefully that helps. We'll catch you on the next video. Mm -hmm.